Well, we are back with another exciting edition of the 19th Hole Podcast for golfers. I'm your host, uh, Dennis Silvers. Glad to have you tuning in today. We've got another very interesting show with our good friend, Larry Clayman, who we've had on a few times before. Larry's always very interesting, very knowledgeable about what's going on in the golf, in the golf situation since he has become a part of that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit on today's show. Anyway, the weather here in Las Vegas is getting good. It's like almost springtime and uh, no rain again. Played Sunday. It was absolutely a magnificent day. It was a chamber day. And it was really nice to play in those conditions other than the rain we've had and the wind and the snow and, you know, the whole deal. So we hope it's good for you as well in whatever part of the country you may be in now. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about Larry. You know, he is a longtime litigation attorney that focuses on ethics and legal standards. Larry is a former United States Justice Department prosecutor, and he founded both Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch as well. And uh, Larry has become uh, heavily involved in some of the litigation involving the PGA Tour and uh, also particularly one player uh, that plays on the Live Tour, for former Masters champion Patrick Reed in some of his defamation cases. We'll talk a little bit about that. So right now, let's bring uh, Larry on to uh, the camera and welcome him onto the show. Give him a big round of applause with everybody in the studio. Glad to have you again, Larry. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, my pleasure. And, and thank you for that very nice introduction. Oh, you're more than welcome. Uh, you know, it, it seems like this stuff involving the PGA Tour and the Live Tour has been going on forever because there's been a lot of ink written about it, both about the events about the tour itself, about the individual players. Where do you think this thing really got legs? Where, what, what prompted this? What started it to begin with? Well, as an old and current antitrust lawyer, I was with the antitrust division at the Justice Department, and I helped break up AT&T when Ronald Reagan was president and dealing with monopolies. AT&T was a monopoly. They pushed their weight around with companies that were trying to come into the market. And ultimately, in a federal court proceeding, they were broken up into mm -hmm. pieces. That's why you have the competition you have today. It's why you have all the cell phone options and other right. kinds of communication options. So what you had here was a PGA tour that was a monopolist that controlled well over 95% or more of the market just in the United States and, and pretty much the same thing worldwide. They did not want a competitor to come in to challenge their total control of professional golf. So when Live uh, was created in 2022, and there had been discussions about a prior league called the Premier League, which was mm -hmm. not that different. Craig right. Norman was involved with that too. When Craig and others founded Live in 2022 and started to play tournaments, first at Centurion in England and then in Portland and then this and that, Patrick Reed, my client, joined Live. Uh, for the Portland tournament, uh, the PGA Tour reacted and they didn't want to give up that hold. And it wasn't just the PGA Tour because the PGA Tour had had these huge multi-million dollar contracts with ESPN, with CBS, and right. with Golf Channel, NBC. And consequently, they also saw Live as a threat because they thought that Live could perhaps get, you know, carried by a station like ABC, which mm -hmm. wasn't involved in, in golf. And then, of course, you had the golf media, which was highly dependent on the PGA Tour for access to players. You know, they right. get free tickets. Right. They're essentially bribed. Okay. That's what they are. It's a lot like the entertainment industry on Broadway, people that write about that. So they came up with a plan to destroy Liv in the inception. And what did they do initially? They smeared Liv because it's financed by the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which not coincidentally, and hypocritically, just happens to finance about 30% of 
of commercial enterprises in this country. Everything from AT&T to Boeing to Disney to uh, Apple, uh, the Saudis are heavily invested and the Saudis are our allies. They're probably one of our top three allies in the entire world. But what did they do? They attempted to smear the Prince of Saudi Arabia, who's very far-sighted, and the players on live, claiming that they were acceptors of blood money, that they were cavorting with terrorists, that uh, they were murderers, uh, you know, an allegation that somehow the prince was involved in the death of Khashoggi, this Washington Post journalist, which has never been shown or proven. Uh, and they cited a CIA report. Of course, when was the last time you could believe the CIA? Yeah. That's how we got into <laughs> into into Iraq. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're they're paid liars, the CIA. So you know this, and I've dealt with them personally. Believe me, uh, in my in my legal practice, I got two injunctions against them for illegal surveillance, along with the NSA and, and others during the Obama Biden administration. So that was their game, and of course, Liv was able to acquire a number of top players. Uh, in addition to Patrick, whether it was Phil Mickelson, you know, had great appeal, right. Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, Cam Smith, uh, you name it. Uh, Liv acquired so many top ranked players that per capita, they had more top ranked players than the PGA Tour. And, and their players had personality. Mm -hmm. A lot of the players on the PGA Tour, with a few exceptions, you know, or like cigar store wooden Indians. I mean, they just don't have a personality or, or a past. So the PGA Tour and its complicit co-conspirators, which included OWGR, official golf world ranking, and the DP World Tour sought out to destroy Liv and its players. And with regard to OWGR, that was to deny Liv players world ranking points, presumably to be kept out of the majors right. and, and other events. And with DP World Tour, they went along lockstep with the PGA Tour and suspended players and fined them. And this is still going on today, regardless of a framework agreement that was agreed to in June of 2023, which was uh, proposing a merger between the two entities, which will never happen, by the way. We can talk about that uh, by virtue of the antitrust laws. Despite all of that, they continue today to try to disparage and harm Liv, particularly after John Rahm was signed right. by Liv for a reported nearly $600 million. Okay, so this is uh, where we are today. Uh, Liv will continue on. Uh, Liv has proven its appeal and its worth. It's a complementary product. There's no reason why the PGA Tour should have done this other than to maintain their monopoly. Right. Liv came up with a, a unique concept of team golf uh, and also the fact that their shotgun starts. So every player goes off under the same weather conditions mm -hmm. at the same time. It's right. infinitely right. more fair. The 54 holes, you have to be actually uh, better to win those tournaments because you can't have an off round. You right. can't falter at all. No. And there are other tours that the official golf world ranking has given points to that have 54 holes, such as MENA. Liv is now part of MENA and MENA is part of Liv, yet the OWGR acting at the direction of uh, the PGA Tour and, and the majors and uh, the DP World Tour, Tour, all of whom sit on the board of OWGR are denying these points. And everybody now conceives that OWGR and its world ranking system is obsolete and completely uh, contrived to favor the PGA Tour, which by the way, designed it. Okay, that they were in on, in on it. So that's what we stand. And I brought a lawsuit, as you pointed out, Dennis, in Palm Beach, Florida, and in Florida State Court is going forward. I will be deposing Tiger Woods, Roy McElroy, Patrick Cantlay, the whole lot of them that are on the player advisory board and others at the PGA Tour in the next months. Uh, it is a class action. There's now a class counsel in addition to myself. and. Uh, it's a very potent case, and it's not been reported very much because the golf media, which is in the hip pocket of the PGA Tour, doesn't want mm -hmm. to acknowledge right. that it's still under risk in an antitrust investigation right. uh, going forward. Right. Are you going to ask for some golf tips after the depositions, Larry? Well, I'm not sure I want any tips from Tiger these days. <laughs> <laughs> 
He hasn't I know. been doing too well, you know, and, and no. I'll be respectful towards him, but it, it's obvious that, you know, his career is probably over as a golfer and yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't wish him any harm or anything like that other than what he's done, which we believe to be heavily anti-competitive with regard to live. Yeah. Uh, Roy McElroy's yeah. had a change of heart. I think that he's yeah. now a proponent of live, I think, because he knew he was going to be deposed. Right. You know, yeah. me. He's definitely and, softened up. There's there's no doubt about it. And, you know, Tiger is famous for that. And, you know, his own tournament at the Genesis, not playing well. And uh, all of a sudden he gets his case of flu because he wanted to withdraw because he did not want to miss the cut in his own tournament. And I'm telling you, that's the only reason he withdrew. Well, that's the conventional wisdom, uh, Dennis. But I have another theory, which may be accurate. I think he was on painkillers. Okay, that stuff is very, very powerful. Could be. I don't know that for a fact. He may have mixed it with some alcohol. Remember yeah. that just a few years earlier, he crashed his car in Pios Verdes. Yeah. Uh, California almost killed himself. Yeah. And and uh, the big question is, that was covered up. Okay, I'm not going to get into this at the deposition. That's not what this is about. But that's just my theory is that he may have taken painkillers yeah. and mixed it. Yeah. And, and that's what happened. You know, yeah. And, I, and I, you know, Larry, I post it and I think you'll agree. Doesn't play a lot of golf that we know of at home, certainly minimal as far as competitive golf on the tour. And you can't be sharp. You can't be competitive if you don't play and work on your game. And he can't with the physical problems he's having. And it's just a tough road for him yeah, right he should now. Go play, uh, wait a couple of years, play on the senior tour. Yeah. Um, he doesn't need the money. I mean, the no. players on the senior tour, you know, got comatose when they saw Liv come into the scene because they don't make much money. Right. They play for the love of the game. Right. But, um, you know, he, he's, I would, this is just my own opinion. I would doubt that he'll ever win another uh, elevated event. I mean, he may I, win I one agree with you. But some of these lesser, you. lesser tournaments with yeah. smaller purse with, right. with up and coming players, but he, he's not going to win an no. elevated event. And, and you've got to be able to walk four rounds, and that's that's a task. And I don't know whether he's going to be able to do that. I get asked a lot, Larry, the, uh, that, and I want to ask you, do you think the trouble and the PGA Tour are getting so upset because do you think they possibly thought they didn't have a product good enough to compete with Liv, and that was the reason they didn't want any competition? It's part of it. I mean, yeah, the team concept is very powerful. I mean, now you have, I forget what they call it, but Roy McElroy and Tiger Woods formed a, a team type thing, which unfortunately for them didn't go forward because their tent collapsed in Palm Beach. Right. Uh, kind of metaphoric in a way. Uh, but you also have, you know, it's very friendly towards younger people. You have music. You know, and, and uh, it doesn't bother anybody. It, it's really a misconception that music's going to distract you. It probably soothes you and makes you feel more calm in some ways. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun event. Liv is fun. And that's why I say it's, it's complimentary. Liv is also a worldwide tour, much more than the PGA Tour. Yeah, Most right. of the tournaments, for instance, in 2024 are not being played in the United States. They're being sure. played in Australia or uh, Spain. Uh, Mexico, other places, Saudi Arabia, for instance, uh, is a place. And, and the Saudis are starting to really love golf as well. Of course, you know, the, the people that backed uh, live from Saudi Arabia, both the Prince and Yasser, uh, they love golf. And, and uh, so the, the concept that this was just sports wa washing was basically a BS, okay? Yeah. Because uh, golf is a, a favorite sport of the powers to be of the public mm -hmm. investment fund. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I, and, and your friend Yasser who heads that I read played in a pro-am in Mexico the other day, got a spot in the pro-am, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, and, and here's the thing is that where I think this is going to come out and I can't speak for Liv and I can't speak for anybody else uh, as an antitrust lawyer and with my case in Palm beach is that, there will never be a merger between the two tours. 
it, it is impossible based on the law. Okay, and it won't happen because not just of the law in the United States, but the law in Great Britain and also the law in the European Union. But what will likely happen is that the two will ultimately be coexist and they can compete side by side. They'll be complementary in terms of the events. Right. And there'll, there'll be some mechanism for players from both tours to play on certain tournaments against each other. Yeah. And, and that's where I think it'll come out. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting to note that, and I was reading, a lot more people were watching the Live Tour here uh, in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago uh, because of John Rahm and the ratings, the viewership for the tour event was down. And you know what? That should tell them something. That should tell them something. It Larry. did. You know, and, and last week, uh, to continue what I said I was doing with regard to my case in Palm Beach, the antitrust case, I said, look, I'm, I'm a golf fan. I'm a consumer. I brought the case in my own name, and then I added a class aspect, aspect to it. Um, I went to a number of PGA events last year. I paid inflated prices for the lack of competition. I was deprived the opportunity of seeing the best players right. play together. Right. So I went to Riviera. What a ticket, very expensive, uh, and, uh, you know, saw what was going on. And I was there on a Saturday, and I got to tell you, there, there really wasn't much excitement. Uh, you know, Hideki Matsuyama, by the way, won. I think that's good that he won. By the yep. way, he wanted to become a member of LIV, but he got, he, uh, based on source information, he got threatened that... Uh, Japanese players would be barred from the PGA Tour if, if he ever became a member oh, of LIV. Interesting. So I'll, I'll be deposing uh, Hideki, too. And I like Hideki. <laughs> People like him, you know? Yeah, he looks like but, a great guy. Yeah, he is. And he actually can speak English, from what I understand. He just doesn't want to. <laughs> uh, you know, which he can understand because he wants to be accurate. You know what right. he's saying? Right. But, uh, and he understands. But the bottom line here is, is that there was no excitement at Riviera. Uh, it was a bust. And now even the leftist fake news golf media is writing that the PGA Tour is falling flat because their players, generally speaking, you know, with the exception of Tiger and, and, and Rory and a few others, uh, they, they don't have a personality. And look, Scotty Scheffler is a great player. He can't putt for, you know, what anymore. But even with that, he's, he's still finishing in the top 10. But nobody's oh, yeah. interested because he's, he, he's, he's just there okay yeah, and and, yeah, and, yeah. and uh and xander shop a great player too but he's just there they, they yeah. don't have a personality the yeah. live players all have these personalities that yeah. make it very very interesting yeah that's uh that's very true all right larry hang in there we're going to take a short break and when we come back we'll have more of the 19th old podcast with our special guest larry clayman we are back right after this hang in there The revolutionary Power to Golf Club requires no swing to hit golf shots from 50 up to 225 yards. That's right, no swing. It's empowering golfers with physical issues to continue enjoying time golfing with friends and family. With just the push of a button, the easy to use Power to Golf Club launches shots down the fairway and onto the green. Whether a physical issue or just want to join in on the fun, the Power to Golf Club is for you. Visit online, powergolfclub.com. One of the perks about being in golf media is that I get to try every club ever made. Of course, like most things, some are better than others. I'm here to tell you that I have found unquestionably the absolute best performing set of irons I have ever played, and my scores show it. Let me introduce you to Grindworks, custom fitted irons that are made to fit your game. Grindworks offers players three different styles of irons. You can choose muscle back irons, cavity back irons, and even blades along with some awesome wedges. And when you purchase your clubs, Grindworks lets you choose the type of shaft you want, the type grip you prefer, and even will adjust the loft and lie of your clubs if needed. That's unheard of. So what are you waiting for? Feel the power and experience and performance of these amazing clubs. Simply go to GrindWorksUSA.com or call 
281-651-4046 to order. Trust me, your handicap will love you for it. All right, we are back for more, everybody, with our guest Larry Clayman. And uh, Larry, when you mentioned it about this initial agreement trying to be put together back in June or whatever, what was the one thing or one or two things you believe that really made it fall apart where they couldn't get enough uh adhesiveness to keep it together let me say one thing before we get to that for the grindworks your commercial which is very good because that's patrick reed and justine reed company and uh, when i started representing patrick uh justine sent me a set of those clubs and like she did with you and yeah. i can't believe how good they are they're softer than miura they're softer than uh, mizuno uh patrick designed them themselves yeah. you have to try them because they are you're not exaggerating they're the best clubs no, I've they're ever terrific used. they are terrific but but to get back to your question here is that um you know the misconception if i've understood the question uh itself was that there would ever be a merger i i think that the two sides agreed to that framework agreement as a pretext to dismiss the litigation that they've been engaged mm -hmm. in in California because they were getting into some very, very dicey areas. Uh, and the PGA Tour uh, was very, very exposed in particular in terms of what documents, and I can't get into specifics, but I've got documents myself right now uh, with regard to Tiger Woods and the PGA Tour and whatever, and I'm seeking more because the PGA Tour withheld them improperly. But, um, you know, it, it was presumed that that would be the death knell for the PGA Tour, and that's why they threw the card, the card in. And then from the Saudi standpoint, uh, they did not want to get into uh, specifics with regard to the PIF and other things, which, frankly, was none of the PGA Tour's business. But they had a judge out there that was very hostile towards Liv and towards the Saudis, Beth Labson Freeman. Uh, I sat in on an initial hearing uh, when... Uh, live players were seeking an injunction, Phil Mickelson, Taylor Gooch, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the first thing she said coming out was, gee, I wish I made as much money as live players. I mean, that, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I, walked, I walked up to the, I walked up to the live, live lawyer uh, at, uh, at a break. And I said, this woman is bad news, yeah. really bad news. Yeah. So uh, now I would have gone before a jury, presumably, but Nevertheless, uh, they, that was the pretext to get out of the case. And th they knew that there would never be a merger. And then, of course, PGA Tour and Monaghan, who is not the most honest person in the world, in fact, quite dishonest, in my opinion, and we'll be deposing to him, too. He's also a defendant in our lawsuit, went behind the back of the Saudis and sought investment by a large group of billionaires in the United States. And it was presumed that if there ever was a merger that the Saudis would be the major investor here. Uh, and I believe they did that uh, for a number of reasons, not just because they're duplicitous, but because you had <clears throat> this opposition on Capitol Hill by Senator Richard Blumenthal, who literally was foaming at the mouth at, at prior hearings about Saudi investment in golf, or for that matter, anything in the United States. And this guy, and I'm not making it up, and I can't defame him, has actually appeared at Communist Party rallies in this country. He's an ultra leftist. He's a senator from Connecticut. You might remember wow. him when he tried to destroy Justice Brett Kavanaugh, you know, over these allegations that were made, obviously phony, by some woman that claimed yeah. she had been sexually assaulted. Yeah. And I'm not even a fan of Kavanaugh, frankly, but I started to sympathize with him. Um, but, uh, you know, so that was a, it was a reaction to that. But in my opinion, there, there will never be a merger between the two uh, as a matter of law uh, because that would create a 99.9% hold over the market. And uh, the antitrust division, which of course at current is controlled by the Biden Justice Department, uh, won't let it go through. 
Yeah. Well, I, uh, as far as a quote legal agreement, but can there be some kind of understanding, Larry, that you alluded to before, as far as uh, getting together on certain events or you know this type yeah. of thing? Yeah. Yeah, there can't be collusion in terms of setting prices. They can't yeah. divide markets. Okay, those are per se violations of antitrust laws, and Florida's laws are even more expansive than the federal law. Uh, and we've also sued under the Florida Unfair Trade Practice Act, which gives consumers rights. So that kind of stuff won't happen. But they could, you know, set the tournaments at certain times that that the, that the players could compete head to head. And when that happened, for instance. At the Masters, the ratings went way up, okay, for television viewership. Yeah. When Patrick competed against Roy McIlroy, two of them were coming down the wire in Dubai a year and a half ago. Ratings went way up, even for the DP World Tour, which was yeah. the DP World Tour then. So it, it would benefit both leagues to have competition between themselves, you know, in, in terms of the players. And, you know, I got to tell you, the fact that, and I have nothing against Scotty Scheffler. I'm sure he's a really nice guy. But he didn't deserve MVP this year. The person that deserved it was John Rahm. I mean, the guy won three or four tournaments. He won, he won the Masters. Yeah. And yet they give MVP, you know, to, among the voting at the PGA Tour to Scotty Scheffler, who's number two, but John Rahm's number one. It's, it's clear about that, you know, in terms of last year. Mm -hmm. So you see those little petty things going on. Uh, that, uh, you know, tell you that the PGA Tour is still extremely concerned about Live because they know they have a product. They know they have a backer that has financial resources. All right. Uh, after Rom was signed, uh, Liv signed Adrian Moronk, a Polish player who was, uh, you know, slighted with regard to the Ryder Cup on the DP World Tour. And they also signed Terrell Hatton, who's a great player, yeah. also of the DP World Tour and, and of the PGA Tour. So you can see the the attraction and you know these parties know that someday they will be allowed into the into to all of the majors so why not sign with live and and uh, you'll see many more coming i think into the future it's been rumored that tommy fleetwood may be next uh, to to go over so and i wanted to add one other thing you know when this thing came out uh, the pga tour the framework agreement uh, allegedly had an agreement with live that Live would not uh, solicit any of their players to play on the, on the Live Tour. Right. Well, the antitrust division immediately stepped in and said, no, you can't have that agreement. That's a restraint of trade. You can't, you know, prevent free, freedom of movement of independent contractor golfers to do that. So that cleared the way for Live to acquire more players. And if, right. if, unless the PGA Tour wants to play ball and actually compete as they say in Yiddish, like a mensch, like a you know good person, you're going to see a lot more PGA Tour players go over to live over in the there. next few yeah. months. Yeah, I, I, years. I totally agree with you. This so-called sports group that gave this $3 billion to the tour, and they call it sports group because all of, it's comprised of all you know team owners that are billionaires. Are they going to be liable in any way uh, as far as maybe any future litigation, Larry, involving the PGA Tour, since they they are a part of it now, that's a good question. Uh, uh, yes, potentially they could be, and and also any players who participated in the anti-competitive conduct on the PGA Tour could also wind up uh, becoming defendants in in, in various lit pieces of litigation that may mm -hmm. ensue. So yeah, they should be wary of that. And, um, you know, professional golfers are great at their trade. Yeah. But they're not, they're not lawyers. No. And they're not, of course, Patrick's become very uh, knowledgeable, uh, as has Justine, on legal issues, because we've had to be with all the defamation that was uh, unfairly leveled against him as a way to get to live, uh, which gave rise to lawsuits, you know, in Jacksonville, Florida, which, you know, are still going on. But... You know, they should be very, very careful about what they do uh, in participating in this. And those players on the PGA Tour Advisory uh, Committee, Council, whatever you want to call it, board, uh, should be very, very careful about uh, how they handle this thing because they could wind up with personal liability. Yeah, exactly. 
But of all of the people, I, I don't get it to pick on, for lack of a better term, why did this end up on Patrick's shoulders of all of the people? Well, you know, and this is interesting, He's a great too. player. He's a major champion. Uh, uh, does a lot of good for the game, both on and off the golf course. So why the hell did it end up great, on great his person. shoulders? Great person, so is Justine. They're all they're really great people. I've gotten to know them. I kind of feel like family at this point, and and I'm sure they feel the same way towards me. But um, it was it was an easy thing. You had somebody by the name of Shane Ryan who wrote this book uh, years ago uh, about, and he needed Shane Ryan is basically, you know, a third rate writer. Uh, yeah, he lives in Durham, North Carolina. Regrettably, I think he went to Duke, where I went to school. But you know, he, he he picked out Patrick as a way to sensationalize his book, and they went back to Patrick's days at the University of Georgia. He was falsely accused of certain things at Georgia, which weren't true, and we have affidavits to show that he was a, accused of cheating when that wasn't true. And so he was picked on, and, and Patrick's not the kind of guy that's going to sit there and kiss anybody's you know behind. He's he's pleasant. He's nice. He's a good person. But he's he's not going to be a good old boy, you right. know. So, you know, they picked him out, and then one thing led to the next. And golf writers, like political writers, are not very original. They just copy what other people write, uh, and they do it with malice. And they were doing the bidding of the PGA Tour. So Patrick became the whipping boy for the PGA Tour's anti-competitive acts against Live. And in virtually every article that came out, there was a picture of Patrick with his Live hat. Okay. Even even matters that didn't even concern him. Mm -hmm. And uh, as one example, uh, Bloomberg News uh, did an article which claimed that the P that live lawyers were investigating 9/11 families. And a it wasn't true, but b it related to a lawsuit in California, the one I'm talking about before this very uh, prejudiced and biased judge that uh, Patrick wasn't part of. Yet they had a picture of him with his, with his hat, as if he was somehow involved in that. Yeah, and and it also creates security problems. You know, at live events, Patrick has to have one or two security guards, and, and some of the other players as well. There was a bomb threat at the Doral event the first year, 2022. I was there on the 16th hole. So they're whipping up this hatred, and. Uh, Patrick has never been found to have cheated, not once. In fact, look at what's happened just in the last few weeks. They don't say anything about this. Wyndham Clark yeah. is alleged to <laughs> tamp down the grass right. and take in illegal drops. Maury McElroy, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you got Jordan Spieth who was disqualified for signing a wrong stru uh, scorecard. Right. Yeah. You know, query. Did he intend to put a lower? Uh, nobody says that. Oh, it was just a mistake. But if it was Patrick, it would be. Oh, it was intentional. Right. You see? Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, but Spieth is the golden boy. So, you yeah, know, he exactly. can do whatever he wants. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very, very lopsided. Very, very unfair. You know, I, I, I fail to mention that Larry's also an author of two books. It takes a revolution and it takes a counter revolution. Are you going to write a book about all of the, the litigation and all the stuff you're going through with the PGA Tour and stuff and all of the dust settles? <laughs> You should. Subject to, subject to attorney client privilege, I probably will. I mean, I, I got to tell you something. I, you know, people know me from Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch, and I'm an activist uh, lawyer in, in another part of my professional life. I'm a private lawyer when it comes to representing Patrick and, and others, uh, and I have other clients as well. But I've never had as much enjoyment as being part of the golf industry and, and, and representing these golf interests like Patrick, you know, it's a way I can stay sane because if you look at what's going on in our country today in Washington, crazy, and you have another show, pick your politics, which I've been on. Uh, this country is basically crazy. almost it's on its knees. It's gasping for air. Yeah. Uh, it's been nearly destroyed, you know, by, uh, you know, the, the, the Biden regime. And it's been also, yeah. You know, harmed by the Republicans who yeah. don't do much of anything other than raise money and pontificate. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 kind of like a release for me in many ways because I hate to see what's going on, and if people are interested in what I do, they can go to FreedomWatchUSA.org, 
which is also the entity which brought the antitrust case in Palm Beach, because I believe in economic freedom as well as, you know, individual freedom, yeah. political tell, freedom. Tell everybody about your podcast, Larry. I was remiss in not mentioning that as well. And I've had the pleasure of being on a couple of times. Uh, but tell well, everybody I do a about radio your show podcast. Every week. I do a radio show every week on Radio America, which you can get at freedomwatchusa.org. You can find it at Freedom Watch's YouTube channel. Uh, it's on Rumble. It's on Truth Social. It's on a number of different places. You can find it. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. And if you want to contribute to our cause, we don't mind with tax deductible contributions. We need it. Uh, but I also do a daily podcast, which you can also find uh, at freedomwatchusa.org and also, you know, at YouTube and other places. Right. So, yeah, I try to com make a comment every day. You know, I am a lawyer of, of, of many years. Uh, I can see through what's going on. And if I do say so myself, no one understands the corruption, uh, dishonesty and deceit of Washington, D.C. as well as I do. So yeah. even when I make negative comments, I'm trying to make the country better. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. a, I'm still right. an optimist because right. basically you have to excise the, the cancerous tumor Correct. before we can survive as a nation. And we've got a cancerous tumor right now That's in a right. number of areas. You are absolutely right. All right, Larry, stick around. We're going to uh, take another short break. And when we come back, we'll kind of finish up, wrap up the show with Mr. Larry Clayman with more great information. So stay with us. We return right after this. As golfers, we want instant gratification when it comes to a better golf swing and playing better golf. Impossible you say? Not anymore. Golf Boost Artificial Intelligence AI, has developed and patented the most advanced swing analysis technology in golf. Simply, the algorithms detect your body position and then analyze your golf swing using their artificial intelligence technology. The AI captures all the relevant data from your swing video and then presents you a personalized lesson. Golf Boost AI is the ultimate swing analysis and virtual instruction system for golfers of all ages and abilities. This sophisticated software takes into consideration your height and build, playing level, and returns the ideal solution for your swing. Bottom line, Golf Boost AI is an incredibly convenient and cost-effective tool for golfers to improve their swing. Go to golfboost.com and check it out. The app is free to download and try. Visit golfboost.com today. All right, we are back with uh, Larry Clayman as our special guest. On this edition of the 19th Old Podcast for Golfers, I'm your host, Dennis Silvers. And Larry, have you gotten any feedback other than perhaps Patrick uh, about how the players felt about playing in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago for the first time? You and I were out there on Sunday. We had a great time. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering, because you know most of these players, well, any feedback? I, didn't ha I don't have any specific feedback, but I could tell, as you could, looking at how they were acting, even under inclement weather, I might yeah, add, yeah. that they were very happy to be there. Las Vegas is a great city. I love Las Vegas, not because of gambling. I'm not a gambler. Uh, I usually stay in Summerlin. We're uh, out there. Uh, when I represented the Bundys, for instance, I would stay out there at the Marriott. 
but um, I, I know that it's an exciting city. It's up and coming. Yeah. Uh, and, and people are moving there in droves. Yeah. Uh, for no other reason than you don't have an income tax <laughs> like Florida and Texas. But it's also a great place. The people of Las Vegas are, are great people, you know, and the working level. So yeah. I, I know that, that the players, I could tell that they enjoyed their, their yeah. time there. I could, too. I could, too. There was a real good buzz about it. And uh, speaking of the Marriott, I'll be uh, emceeing a fundraiser there Wednesday night for a great young lady who's running for mayor of Las Vegas, uh, Debbie Peck. And uh, I'll be thinking of you when I'm at the Marriott. So that would be uh, that would be great. So we're trying to get you back out to Las Vegas to play some golf. Yeah, I want to do that. Um, a couple of years ago, I played TPC uh, Las Vegas. Vegas. Okay. Mm -hmm. but I wasn't discriminating. That's a PGA Tour owned course. Right. And it, it's it's an excellent course. You yeah. Know? And uh, here at TPC Summerlin is even better. So and also um, you've got a lot of Club Corp courses out there and a lot of other courses that are really great. Yeah. yeah. Now we have some we have some good golf out there, and we're anxious for you to come out and stay again and and get you know a couple of a uh, couple of rounds in and uh, everything. Where, say a year from now, Larry, put on your prognostication hat. Where do you see this thing ending up? You know, you're a better interviewer than Barbara Walters ever was, and you're probably better looking. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Because she's now, now she's eight feet under, so she probably doesn't look so good. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but in any event, may, may she rest in peace. But where do I see it going? I, I see that the live will be solidified even more. Yeah. And that uh, the two tours, as I said, will learn to coexist together and they're going to have to do it because they're in deep trouble in my antitrust case in Florida. And uh, we I'm confident of getting a verdict from a jury against the PGA Tour. And also, you know, I had I had added the DP World Tour, which is the European Tour and the official golf world ranking, both located in the same building, by the way, in Wentworth, England, no coincidence. And the DP World Tour was basically bought and paid for by the PG World uh -huh. Tour, big investor. Um, that, that little game of uh, collusion is going to be broken up in my case. And you'll see that the live players are going to have to, uh, they will get world ranking points or they'll come up with a new system. And you'll see them competing in all the major tournaments. Good. Um, if, once they, they qualify in, in, an, in the ordinary course, you know, as, yeah, as any good. other golfer. Because that's, can, what golf, can, that's what golf fans want. They want to see yeah, these well, you guys, know, Patrick, some of the best players year, in the world. Patrick has a lifetime exemption to the Masters, and uh, so, you know, I'll be there this year watching him. And if he does well, because his world ranking points have declined because of this unfair competitive right. conduct, then he'll be able to participate, you know, in one or more of the other yeah. major tournaments. This happened last year because he, he finished uh, third, you know, tied for third last year, and uh, that gave him enough points to then play in the other major events and right. believe me those other major events the people that ran them were doing their best to manipulate their rules retroactively to keep him and other live golfers out that's extremely anti-competitive i'll be deposing them as well in my lawsuit because uh, their conduct was transparent yeah yeah that's uh that is uh that is incredible well i'm sure you will have a good time at augusta national and it seems patrick always steps up kicks it into another gear with the big events, with the majors, with the golf, World Golf Championships that he's won. So, you know, good uh, good on him. Uh, and, and Well, let me we tell you, he's a, nine -time, he's a nine-time PGA Tour winner. He's a two-time right. Olympian. He's a Masters champion. He's won a yeah. number of other tournaments. Um, you know, if, if media hadn't beaten up on him the way they did, and, and I, I also see some of the low-class fans, you know, some of these and I'm not anti-youth, okay, but people in the range of 25 to 35, they get drunk at events and yeah, things like that. Yeah, it, yeah. I've seen what happens. The guy would probably have at least 25 victories by now if, if people had laid off him, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but you got these low-class people that show up yeah. at the PGA Tour events and sometimes at the majors, and, um, you know, they're showing off for their girlfriends or yeah. their boyfriends. Right. And, uh, you know, 
and that was another reason why he left the PGA Tour because they did not protect him right. or his family, uh, and uh, you know they they really abused him on the PGA Tour. Yeah, yeah, that that is true, and I think you're absolutely right. There are a number of really good players that are kind of in line wanting to leave the PGA Tour to get over to live. And I think it's just a question of time. And I am predicting, Larry, you heard it here first, uh, Terrell Hatton is going to win a major this year. Oh, yeah, he's an excellent golfer. He is he's, fantastic. He's unflappable. Yeah. He's unflappable. And, and I think Joaquin Neiman was just given an exemption yesterday. To the Masters, into, right. Into the, for the Masters, he's a great player. Yeah, they've got so many great players. Yeah, oh, yeah. In fact, you're now starting to see articles written by left-leaning fake news golf media, which are saying, you know, you blew it, Monahan. You blew it, PGA Tour, because now Liv has better golfers, a better strength of field than the PGA Tour. Yeah, per cap. Yeah, per cap. Yeah, no, absolutely. And no absolutely one was interested right. in Riviera last week after after a uh, Tiger. Uh, you know, with Drew for whatever yeah. reason. People True. lost interest. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. So anyway, anyway, Larry, we're out of time. Thank you so much again for your time. I know you're busy as hell. And uh, we always love having you on. We'll get you back sooner than later. Keep up with hey, what's brother. going on with all the litigation and uh, uh, and stuff like that. We always enjoy it. Always enjoy well, it. I enjoy it too, Dennis. You're, you're great. You're a good friend. And... Uh, we appreciate the support. Okay. Freedomwatchusa.org. We appreciate the There you go. The there you go. I'll, keep, I'll talk about it. Anyway, thanks again, Larry. We'll talk to you soon. All right. We're going to step away one more time, take uh, our last play, break for the show, which is going to include the golf minute. So pay close attention. We're right back. The revolutionary Power to Golf Club is helping golfers around the world continue to enjoy the greatest game of all. This amazing club requires no swing to hit shots from 50 up to 225 yards. That's right, no swing to hit shots, including fades, draws, low shots, as well as high ones. One incredible club does it all. Golfers with a wide variety of physical issues, including bad backs, hip shoulders, and more, are now back in the game golfing with friends and family. Just set the club to the desired distance and with a push of the button, the easy to use Power to Golf Club launches shots down the fairway and onto the green. The Power to Golf Club has been endorsed by some of the biggest names in golf and the number of golfers enjoying the game by use of our unique technology continues to grow. Whether a physical issue or just want to join in on the fun, the Power to Golf Club is for you. Don't be left on the sidelines. Get back in the game today. Visit at PowerGolfClub.com. Carter Bonus of Spectrum Golf not slowing down. His third year at the PGA Show and the cameras are still following him. This time, Whistle Sports Media and Entertainment and Fox 35's morning show in Orlando, Florida. Carter, who is on the autism spectrum, has been Sports Illustrated Sports Kid of the Year, the Masters UPS Unstoppable CEO of the Year, all while securing a spot on the Stars of the Spectrum golf team created by former NFL quarterback Doug Flutie. Carter has been telling his incredible story about why he started his line of golf apparel around the globe, and his impact is making a difference. I know that some stuff seems hard and that it's impossible, but my, one of my favorite quotes is, it seems impossible until it's done. And over the past three years, I never thought I would get here and do all the stuff that I'm doing right now. Be Sports Illustrated Sports Kid of the Year for 2022. Be UPS's and the Masters Unstoppable CEO. Meet Steph Curry. Meet all of these good people. Meet Ernie Els, Alex Checa. Meet all, and be speaking in schools and in front of all of you good people and everyone that I've spoken to before. I never thought I would do any of this. When I was little, I thought I would be nothing. But now I'm actually here 
and I am successful, and I am happy, and I am thriving, and I'm saying if I can do it, you guys can do it. Carter, who loves playing golf, designed his own logo and put it on the softest material he could find because he has a skin sensitivity. So it not only looks good, but feels good too. He offers hats, belts, shirts, pants, and more. For more information, go to carterspectrumgolf.com. Hi everybody, I'm Dennis Silvers for 8 News Now, here with another Golf Minute. I'm with Adam Markman, PGA teaching professional out here at Stallion Mountain Golf Club. Adam, so many people come over the top and they wonder how they could stop it from pulling it left or slicing the ball. Give everybody a tip on what you tell your students. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Dennis. You know, one thing I recommend players to do is you don't have to necessarily take a driver out to start your round or on any par four, for example, just take a simple three wood or a hybrid out and you wanna just swing smooth and easy. You're not trying to kill it. Use the upper portion of your body, your shoulders, because when that happens, you start doing things and getting a little bit too tight at the top. And then when that happens, you're gonna be doing this versus using the lower body and the legs to clear out and hit more square, okay? Adam, that was really, really great advice. I know that's gonna help me. A lot of our viewers stay out of the woods. I'm in there so much, I'm starting to know the bears by their first name. So really, <laughs> really well done. Stallion Mountain Golf Club. We'll see you back next time with another Golf Minute. All right, a good tip from uh, Mark there out at uh, Stallion Mountain. We hope you're enjoying these golf minutes. We love uh, doing them for you. And we want to welcome Spectrum Golf onto the show. We had Carter on our show last year when he was here in Las Vegas with his uh, mother and father, two great people. I will wear my Spectrum shirt next week. The colors are great. The fabrics are great. The design is great. All done by Carter, very, very imaginative, creative, with help from his parents. And uh, just go to SpectrumGolf.com, check them out. They're priced right. You will be styling when you're wearing one of those shirts. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the 19th Hole Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers, and uh, we're going to be back same place, same time next week. So until then, keep it in the short stuff. Get out and play golf. So long, everybody.